Welcome to your first assembly tutorial. You may notice I have the flat assembler here, but that's not what we're going to use. You may use that further in, because I will start going into this, but that's not going to be till like far in the tutorials. We're going to use another tool. This, um, the assembly that, um, that we're using, the x86 assembly, um, if you're on a 64 bit computer, you won't be able to run it. You gotta go to DOSBox.com and download that, and they'll let you emulate it. And old, comp um, I'm actually not running Windows XP. I'm emulating Windows XP. So technically, I am running Windows XP, but this is not my, this is not my default operating system. Um, so if you have like an old Windows XP like this, you, you don't need to download the emulator or anything like that. Just go to start, run, cmd, cd, desktop, debug, and that starts it. If you're using a 64-bit, like a Windows 7 or maybe Windows Vista, I think there are some 32-bit Windows Vistas out there. And there's a tiny bit of 32-bit Windows 7s. So I've seen one before. Um, if you have one of those, you need to download debug.exe from the description, because it won't be built into your computer, and then you're going to have to emulate it with DOSBox. Now, we're actually not going to start coding because I need to introduce you to assembly. It's basically a um, a symbolic representation of machine code, which, which that's a quote from I think Wikipedia. It basically says it it's like characters and symbols and for um basically it's um, stuff something you program that represents machine code and machine codes like binary and stuff like that um, so this is actually assembly is actually closer to the operating system than things like C++ although that doesn't necessarily mean it's better um, it's not very practical to code things with assembly although people do it all the time I just do assembly because it's fun in my opinion so if you load debug and you just type A100, now you'll see two values here, A0 ADF and 0 100. Um, let me just say that all the zeros on this side don't really mean anything, such as, let me open up notepad. If I have 100, that's equal to 0 0 0 0 0 100 or 0 100 or zero one hundred. When you have zeros on this side it's just like normal numbers. Those don't affect the value at all. So like how there's right there ADF is equal to zero ADF and that's also equal to zero 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 ADF. And um you don't also don't have to capital capitalize it. Like you don't have to say zero ADF every time. You can just write ADF like that, and that's equal to zero ADF. And another thing, these values all um, assembly takes hex. These values are hex values. You don't need to learn hex values um, and how to use hex. You don't need to know that. Um, if some reason you happen to know that, I guess that would be useful. But 100 does not equal 100. Um, the he this is the hex value for 100 because all your values are hex in assembly. So see 0 ADF? ADF is a hex value. So 100, I think that's equal to 160. And then I don't know what ADF is. I think that's some huge number like 17,000 or something. But these values are your location and data. You may wonder what that means. Let's open up MS Paint. You don't need MS Paint or Notepad for assembly. I'm just doing this for diagrams. So imagine this is your location and data. So it says 0 ADF is your X location and 100 is your Y location. So let's draw a, a little graph. Now this would be your X and up here would be your Y. So how your computer stores data is it what how you and how it's stored with assembly and stuff, it's it's stored at points. 
Um, let's make this zero. So when you're coding assembly, here's your here's your position and data. Your codes always start. This number could be anything. Your x location does not matter. This can be anything. You never want to change this. So in my case, it's ADF. So let's say right here. Let's pretend this is where um, ADF is. ADF. So, and then we have 100, right? Whoops. 100 right here. Here's our Y location. So let's go ahead and say, like, this line right here is 100. Let me move this just to make it look nicer. So let's pretend um, this is this graph. This graph is basically representing the data in your computer. So this is where your code will start. I think the x value right here may differ depending on your computer, but it, this one should always be a hundred. You always want to say A100 right there. Well, let me draw a point. There. It's not a big point. Let's get the brush. So there's our point. And see, when th imagine, okay, see, this is a plane. And if you know, and if you did basic geometry or at least started it, or at least past fourth grade, you should know what a graph is, but if you know some about geometry, you would know simply plain two dimensional figure that goes infinitely in all directions. And that's how um, your computer is. You can store data anywhere you want on this graph. Um, and such as I can store my data at 0, 0, or 1, 1, or 5, 5, or 1 million, 1 million. But the thing is, our, co our assembly code, when it starts reading from the data, your assembly code, it's going to start at 100 ADF. And like I said, ADF may differ. Um, it's going to start at 100 ADF and go up. So let's make an array. If you know, don't know how, if you don't know what an array is, I mean not an array. Let's make a array. Here's our array. That looks terrible. Here's our array. Array is a figure in. Um, it's a line goes infinitely in all directions. Array starts at a point and goes infinitely in one direction. So this is kind of how this is a representation of how you store your data in assembly and the, with debug. Your uh, um, codes will always start at 100 and then you want to you can store your data infinitely as much as you want going up, but you can't go down. If you try to um, store your data at like 98, you could like get some errors. Um, and if you try, and you also have to stay on this X, which means if you try to store your data at one point over, or if you try to like store it at way back here or way over here, it won't work. You gotta store your data on this ray. Um, if that's complicated, I think you'll eventually understand with working. So as you can see, here's our location and data. X, ADF, Y, 100. And that's the point. This is where we currently are at this point. So how? So now I'm going to tell tell you how we are on how we store how how we like store data. Um, let's say so let's say I'm not going to um, jump one two three. Now you may notice it goes to one o two. That means, and you notice you're still on the array. 
how you can tell you're still in the right is because AD, it's still ADF, it's still on that X it's supposed to remain on, and now 102 is larger than 100, so it's still on this ray, it's kind of like right here now. Let's label that as 102. So there. Now, why, you may wonder, how come when I typed in this code, it went to 102 instead of 100? Because when you're storing data, you're storing them by bytes. And different things may take up different amounts of data. And this jump123 command takes up two bytes. Takes up 100 and 102. So when you're here to write your next line, um, your next code, it's going to go to 102 because that's the next open space. So, um, so the jump 123 command took up two bytes of data. So now I'm at 102 where I can insert more data. And wh what does jump 123 mean? Well, your assembly code is read from the bottom of your point to all all the way till it ends, which wherever the end of your code is. So it's going to start at 100 and then keep on going. But with the jump 1, 2, 3 does, whoops. Let me label 1, 2, 3. Jump one two three tells the code what right when it sees the first line at one hundred to jump to data one two three and start reading the codes there instead of one hundred. So now it's going to jump over here and keep on going up and reading codes uh, on up. You may wonder why did we jump and leave this whole open space? Well, we did this because now this big space is empty. Now we can use this big space to store our sh um, string. And I'm going to show you. You may notice this command. I'll go over more commands in the next tutorial and explain them. This defines my string, hello world. I'm inputting this string at 102. You may see how it jumps from 102 to 110 instead of to 104. That's because the string, this string takes up 8 bytes of data. If you watch, if I type in A102, the A character command lets us jump to different positions in data. Let's go back to 102 and type in a longer string. Hello, Bob. How are you doing? This is a longer string right here. And as you can see, this one takes me to 121. That's because this, since this string's longer, it took up data from 102 all the way to 121, which I think that's like... 120 bytes of data because you think you gotta include the first one um something like that but this as my point is you notice it moved forward because it, it moved more up the number line because you took up more data so this is where so this is an example of um empty um space where we can store data. So that's an example of what that is. Now, now our code's going to start from here and going up. Um, in assembly, where we have a lot of things, like we have registers, um, we have, and like I said, everything runs on hex, all your values, well, it doesn't run on hex, it uses all hex values though. Um, and everything must stay must stay on the ray. Your data must stay on the ray. And and this is just an introduction of how we're going to be storing our data. And in the next tutorial, I'm actually going to start writing some codes into the data. And the next one's probably just going to be a simple hello world.